Hello and welcome to another video here at AV Forums. This time we're taking a look at our recommended picture settings for the Panasonic TX50DX750B Ultra HD 4K TV. So the first thing you need to do is go into the menu system, which you do by pressing the menu button on the remote control. Then we select the picture sub menu and then the correct viewing mode. Now we're going to show you settings for both day and night. So starting with the day setting, we're using the cinema mode. Uh, backlight set to 50, contrast at 90, brightness you can leave it as default setting of zero. Color also can be left at its default setting of 50 and the same goes for tint. Bring sharpness down to zero. Set the color temperature for warm two, which is closest to the interest standard of D65. Turn vivid color off, color remaster off, now adaptive backlight control, this is the local dimming, we actually found it wasn't that effective in action so we've left it off. However, feel free to experiment, you could try a low setting and see what you think. Uh, sometimes it works very well, sometimes it didn't work so well. So in this particular instance we've left it off. The native blacks on this TV are actually very good for an LCD panel, so we don't think you necessarily need the local dimming to still have a really good picture. Ambient sensor off, noise reduction off, MPEG remaster off, resolution remaster off. Tangent frame creation, we're leaving it off. However, some people like it, uh, and certainly some people like to experiment using it with, uh, with sport, for example, with football, things like that. But with film-based content, movies, dramas, etc., we recommend leaving it off unless you want it to look like cheap video. Now, advanced settings. In here, contrast control off. Color gamut, Rec 709, which is the entry standard for, uh, for DVD, for Blu-ray, and for high-def TV. White balance, the white, the grayscale performance is actually pretty good. So all we need to do is just tweak the red gain up three and that gave us a very accurate grayscale performance. Color management, again, pretty accurate out of the box. Just a bit of tweaking here, as you can see, in red, green, and blue. And also some minor adjustments uh, here in uh, magenta and also down in the luminance of yellow. We've chosen a gamma of 2.2 for the daytime setting, and that gives you a pretty accurate gamma setting, so you can use that. Then we have option setting. Uh, nothing in there apart from film cadence mode, which you can leave on if you're watching an interlaced signal. And now we're gonna have a look at the settings for nighttime. So we've used cinema for day, and we will use the true cinema setting for the night setting. So you can see it's just got a little bit darker there um, because we don't want it too bright when you're watching TV at night and in a sort of, even in a room with some ambient light, you don't want the image to be too bright. It can be very fatiguing to watch a bright image for a long period of time, which is why there's two settings, a brighter setting for daytime viewing and a darker setting for nighttime viewing. Uh, so here we've got backlight control at 30, contrast at 90, again, brightness, Color and tint, the default settings, sharpness down to zero. Color temperature, again, warm to, closest to the entry standard, D65. Vivid color off, color remaster off. Again, we've left that light control off, but feel free to experiment, maybe try low if you like. Ambient sensor off, noise reduction off, MPEG remaster off. Resolution remaster off. Again, intelligent frame creation, we're leaving it off, but you might want to try it for things like sport, but again, we recommend you don't use it for film-based content. Advanced settings, uh, contrast control off, color gamut, Rec 79 again. Uh, white balance, here we tweaked it just, again, very accurate out of the box. Just needs to move red up plus four to get a very accurate grayscale performance. And again, with the color management system, the colors out of the box were also very good. So some minor tweaking going on here in red and green and blue, it's a very minor tweaking again in magenta and yellow, but uh, overall a very accurate performance even out of the box. And then we've used the gamma of 2.3 for, for the nighttime setting, so we recommend that. Now those are our settings for the um, nighttime and daytime settings. This is for standard dynamic range content for normal TV, for Blu-ray, for DVD, for anything that's, you know, um, malmastered using the current standards for standard dynamic range. Now we'll show you some settings 
that you can use for high dynamic range. We're now sending the TV an HDR source, um, but before we do anything else, you need to go into the setup menu and make sure that HDMI HDR setting is turned on. Now, why this is in the setup menu and not in the picture menu, I don't know, but it's essential that you go to HDMI HDR setting and whichever HDMI input you're using for an HDR source, you've got to make sure that it's turned on. Otherwise, the source will think the TV is an SDR TV and not an HDR TV. So we're using HDMI 1 for our HDR source, so we've got it turned on. Once you've done that, then we can look at the picture submenu again and select the settings for HDR. Now, the majority of the settings are actually going to default once the TV detects an HDR signal. Um, so viewing mode again, true cinema, once it detects an HDR signal, uh, you can see it selects a backlight of 100 and a contrast setting of 100. The rest of the controls after that are pretty much at the default settings. So brightness still zero, color 50 and tint 50, bring sharpness down to zero. You can still use warm two for the color temperature because D65 is still the, the standard for um, Ultra HD and HDR. And then you turn vivid color off, color remaster off. Tactic backlight control we got set to minimum for HDR content ambient sensor off, resolution remaster off. Now down in the advanced settings, very important you make sure you select the color gamut of Rec 2020, which is the standard for uh, HDR and for Ultra HD. And then down in the option settings, uh, you can select 4K Pure Direct, turn that on if you like. Also HDMI content type, we've got set off for HDMI, um, HDMI inputs that we're using, because uh, we're watching video and also our HDMI RGB range set to normal for the inputs that we're using. And down in the screen settings, just make sure, of course, if you have a scan is turned off, which is in our case, in fact, it's grayed out because of the signal that you're receiving. And those are your settings for an HDR source. Um, but don't forget, you can actually read the review at avforums.com forward slash reviews. And you can also see more videos at avforums.com forward slash videos and why not follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook thanks for watching